Moving on to the conference proper, our opening session is a keynote presentation on performance marketing to be presented by Ruth Stubbs. Ruth Stubbs is the CEO of iProspect Aegis Media Asia Pacific. She oversees all of the iProspect search and performance marketing services in the region and is responsible for the acceleration of digital media capabilities across Aegis Media's agency brands Carrot, Visium, and Isobar. Prior to working with Aegis Media, Ms. Stubbs was president of Media Brands Ventures Asia Pacific. It's a long resume. Are you okay with that? <coughs> she was responsible for developing and growing their assets across 11 markets in the region. Prior to this, she spent five years with WPP's Group M as founding Asia Pacific CEO of Group M Interaction. Before moving to Singapore in 2004, Ms. Stubbs spent 10 years with Euro RSCG Worldwide heading its digital media operations in New York, Hong Kong, and Sydney. She is an active leader in the area of digital and media advancement in the Asia-Pacific region and is a regular speaker on these subjects at conferences in Southeast Asia and China. She sits on several high-profile boards and juries in Singapore, including the AdTech Advisory Board, and she is also a member of the Interactive Advertising Bureau, MMA, and Direct Marketing Association. Yes, Ms. Ruth Stubbs, the floor is yours. We can clap a little louder than that, guys. Come on, I'm sure you've had your coffee this morning. I love a good CV. It sort of tends to morph a little bit every time I hear it, but it sounds great. So thank you, everybody, for having me. And now my computer's gone to sleep, so I'm just going to start it up. Um, I never thought in my life that I would be following uh, a Miley Cyrus picture. And I have a son, so there you go. But crazy the other night. There we are. So uh, good morning and welcome. Um, I think the, the, the first part of the day, it's, it's really important to set up and sort of try and excite the crowd to ask for more from the rest of the speakers. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do this morning is, is, is set up the proposition that we're going to, I guess, complete over the next couple of days. And that is that now is the time to embrace digital performance marketing. Um, many of us have been around for a really long time um, and there are so many new faces uh, that, that we meet every time we, we come to one of these conferences. Um, but I think that it's really important and a very important message that uh, the Internet and Mobile Marketing Association of the Philippines are focusing on this particular aspect of our business. It's really, really critical to the success of so many of the brands that we work with today. Um, so on that, I'm just going to jump right in. The reason that we spend so much time focusing on brands is because they are our bread and butter a lot of the, the people in this room. Um, and the way that performance marketing is evolving, it's giving us a new lens to look at these brands. Um, at Aegis Media and at iProspect, and a lot of the companies that we compete with in the market, we are reinventing the way that brands are built in our approach to performance marketing. Now, I've been in the industry for about um, 25 years. I was waiting for, oh, what? <laughs> Seriously? No, no. Um, so first of all, you know, 25 years ago, I spent most of my days hoping that my clients' target audiences would be at home on Wednesday night at 7.30. So that what I was doing was actually going to make sense and that I would have a job the following year. Um, and then, you know, in 1997, I moved up to, to this region from Australia and we started focusing on media that, that was more action-oriented. Even back then, um, I used to buy tons and tons of impressions on Yahoo. There was no Google back then. And, uh, and we used to hope that somebody would find the message relevant or find it among the myriad of competitors on the home page. Um, and then we sort of... Oh, there's that hole again. Ladies, watch 
your high heels on this stage. Anyway, um, and then as my role as uh, chief executive at, at iProspect, we're now really focusing on actions. And that's what I think you'll hear a lot about over the next couple of days. It's about actions and the value that we place on these actions. So I'm going to be absolutely shameless here right now and show you what I think is a really funny video, which does talk about iProspect, but it sort of puts things in perspective a little bit. This is the internet. And somewhere in all this digital chaos, there are actually people who want to buy what you're selling. So how do you reach them? Computers, tablets, smartphones, paid search, banner ads, social media? You better decide fast or oh, yeah, you lost them. They're looking at pictures of kittens now. Maddening, right? Don't worry, there's one company that knows exactly how to reach them. Because reaching the right person at the right time with the right message is what iProspect is all about. We are digital performance marketing specialists offering multi-channel expertise and a complete range of digital solutions to Wait, what? We help you stand out. We eat this stuff up. I mean, we don't even see the data as numbers anymore. We just see a single 26-year-old female shopping online for her next purchase. Bottom line, iProspect helps you reach more and waste less. Want proof? Here's some big numbers to look at. And some more. And some more. Feeling good? Good. We've done it for some of the savviest companies all over the world, and we'll do it for yours too. Our process is simple, really. Okay, at least it sounds simple. Craft a plan, watch the data, analyze, adjust, analyze, adjust. Because there's no such thing as set it and forget it when it comes to digital marketing. Ah, there's the spot. So there you have it. We have the technology, the people, the reach. So you can see around the corner, act faster, and dare to be bolder. Okay, so I'm going to be honest. It's not just iProspect that does this. There are several incredible performance marketing companies in the room today, and we'll be back tomorrow. Um, there is, in fact, a full competitive set of amazing performance marketers that we compete with every day. Um, so I just want to make that clear. It's not all about us. So um, anyway, what I wanted you to really take out of that video is some of the recurring themes that I think you're going to hear about over the next couple of days. Reach more, waste less. I mean, what more could you ask for? It's pretty much the reality of performance marketing. So uh, there's no need to really overcomplicate things. However, that being said, <laughs> it's what we do really, really well, is overcomplicate things. Um, so the occurring themes that we hear about uh, when we're talking about media marketing um, and the media landscape today um, are probably not going to be new to you. Uh, convergence in the media landscape is a very, very popular theme everywhere you go. Interaction between users and technology and technology itself and the role of data and new ways to connect with consumers. They're the three areas that, that we really need to get our head around as an industry and create some very clear approaches um, to the challenges that each of these three areas present. Um, what we do find is that digital technology is probably the most overcomplicated area of the business that we live and breathe in uh, within. Um, we live in a world where everything is converging. Nowhere more is converging or convergence impacting our business than what's happening between the technology, the consumers, and the content. And I think you'll hear some really interesting perspectives on each of those areas as we move through the, the next couple of days. So the points that I wanted to make is that it's digital technology that's creating more media. And I'm a media girl and been trading media for many, many years. So our life is becoming a little bit more challenged if we don't reevaluate the media relationships that we work across. Technology is also, oh, yes, I'm here. Uh, digital technology is also uh, creating the opportunity for more devices to get in the hands of more consumers. And that media, needs to transverse 
many more places. So there's greater interconnection between those devices and with more and more business being done online and via mobile, technology is sort of the focal point of how we talk to consumers in a lot of the meetings that we attend every day. So this puts a lot more of a spotlight on supply and demand. And let's face it, supply and demand is sort of the business that we're in. The convergence between the consumer demand and our ability to supply is challenged more than ever as we become more reliant on digital channels to do business. Simply put, on the supply side, we cannot provide barriers to access, otherwise our customers will go elsewhere. So that's a one day long presentation, that one chart. So it's pretty much about remembering that supply and demand has just become a little bit more granular. So we've witnessed through this convergent media landscape, um, the arrival of five dominant leaders. Now, when, when I go to North Asia, there's another five that sort of provide the same services. They just have different names. So we won't focus on them, we'll focus, focus on these. These leaders are very familiar to all of us. Amazon, you think of commerce. Apple, about design and innovation. Facebook, clearly about community. Google, search and video, among other things. And Microsoft. So these five dominant brands have taken leadership stakes in five very important ecosystems. And these ecosystems form the channels through which we drive performance marketing. So we have mobile, brand integration, community, search and video with Google, and then distribution and utility, which is how we work with more of the commerce channels. So each one of these ecosystems have a lot of media connectivity. They have their own sales divisions, they have their own rep, they have their own point of contact. It's becoming more and more challenging for us as, as media guys to draw the lines that the consumers traverse in order for our clients to sort of see a media plan that's going to show them how everything's going to work. And I don't think we've sort of sorted that out yet. This is how complex it can be because you think of yourself as a consumer, although Facebook can provide every single communication platform that you need, you don't just limit yourself to one media owner. That's irrelevant to you as a consumer. The way that everything comes together is absolutely critical. So uh, we're not just engaging for Google for search, although a lot of people do, nor Apple just for mobile. So our media partnerships have changed forever. We don't just use one ecosystem, we use different components from multiple partners to bring a story to life. And when you think about the creative teams that create the messages for our clients to communicate their proposition, this is a very challenging environment to navigate. We liken it with some of our clients that have multi-brand portfolios that communicate across multiple flat platforms as, as transmedia storytelling, and it's not a new concept, but I think it's something that we can adopt to help us navigate this landscape. So transmedia storytelling, like I said, it's not new. It just has taken a little bit more of a, a, a different form when we're talking about performance marketing. So transmedia storytelling, if you're not familiar with it, is engagement with different media, heightening the audience's experience and enjoyment and understanding and affection for a brand or a story. So it's about taking different elements and putting them together and always the sum of the parts is really, really important. Now, continuing the superheroes theme, this is a little bit like the Avengers. They all have a very interesting story individually, but together, it's just a better movie. 
So think about that when you're looking at the digital landscape and how we're when you're trying to communicate a compelling proposition to a consumer, you have to think about how all of these aspects can weave together with the different strengths from each of the ecosystems to communicate effectively or more effectively because that's really what we're in it for. Digital performance is really where data, technology and media converge. So we need to get it right. There are far fewer opportunities for us to say, well, let's just buy more impressions. A lot of our remuneration today and in the future is going to be based on how we perform. So we need to have a very, very modelled understanding of how each of these components are going to work for us. And that's where the data side comes into effect. So, getting back to the topic, it's all about return on investment. So for many brands, digital media is no longer just a driver of marketing messages. It's a, a, a component of the business. And that adds another level of complexity to our role as performance marketers. So digital performance marketing is all about reaching more and wasting less. And unless we have experience with the models, it's very difficult for us to be able to predict success. So we need to get our heads around the data that already exists in the market today. Data reveals intent and it's how we understand what consumers want. So our ability to look at the data and make a, a pretty well informed decision on what a consumer wants is a reality today. When you look at the terabytes of data that are available for free in the market, we're able to put a pretty good hypothesis together for any of our clients looking to achieve an action. One of the best indicators of intent has been sitting right in front of us for a really long time and that's search. Um, search reveals the world's intent. So it's a very, very powerful use of insight. Not just what consumers are, are, are thinking when they type a desire into their search engine, but how they think about it, where they think about it, and that's what we need to take more seriously from the activities that we've been doing for many, many years with digital. So by understanding search, we can pretty much understand what the world wants. So think of it as a first step. But as powerful as search is, it's just one part of the digital media universe. And these days, people just don't want to sit at a desk and Google to find what they want. They're on the move and they're connected everywhere they go. They're just as likely to be searching for products on their phone, on a train, or right outside the store. And where they're searching, they're picking up recommendations from friends, and I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more about that later on this morning. They're checking their email for loyalty promotions, watching online demonstrations, capturing QR codes from an outdoor advertisement to get a discount or find out more about the product. In other words, they're navigating the media universe that's incredibly globalized and more and more converged. Of course, this is really cool and it gives a lot of us jobs. We now have so many ways to create an amazing customer experience and that's what our clients want. For brands, it's sort of a double-edged sword because it's harder to be heard. So how do we get them to listen? It's about finding the sweet spot. And again, that's where data will reveal all that we need to know. By optimizing activities across multiple channels, we can find the exact point where a customer is ready to engage with our clients' brands and create and reveal a really engaging experience so that they just can't do anything except act. So when we can understand the last click or the attribution 
of an act of an action and we put commercials around those models we are far closer to creating ROI than we ever have been this is true ROI so if somebody knows exactly what they're looking for and type in the name like I did last night for a book the Amazon result was the first thing that came up for my request so this is a good thing for the product but it's hard to compete once people know exactly what they want. So if somebody types in a brand, it's pretty much an action to follow. So how do we compete if we're not a well-known brand? That's where we need to understand how this attribution model process really drives to a positive action, regardless of the competition. So when that is the case, we need to advise our clients to move further upstream in the sales cycle to when they're still browsing to make the case. So there's solutions for everything. Attribution modeling is, is, is a specialty that I think, you know, has finally started coming out of the closet. We've been doing it for many, many years in the performance space. However, it just makes so much more sense now to our clients, finally. So, there's a lot more to consider than search and that very, very simple sales attribution model that I just presented to you. Paid social, mobile, paid search, content creation, SEO, performance display, lead gen, analytics and conversion, feeds, video, conversion optimization and, and um, affiliates are just some of the products that you may see when you talk to your performance marketing agency or the arm, the performance arm of your full service agency. These are all products that have evolved because our clients want us to be more effective when we're delivering an action. So, what does this mean for brands? It means a lot more than search, I hasten to say. It means a truly data-driven approach to all marketing and media. And we need to be prepared to focus on adopting a more performance-based culture. So when we pitch today, we ask our clients, hand on heart, to pay us once we deliver the results that they're looking for. Of course, you've got to pay for people's time, but the confidence level has never been higher. The models that we've created, the data that we have at our fingertips, makes it far more real to deliver a 387% increase on card applications for American Express or a 700% improvement on ROI when Adidas launches a new shoe. These, this is the reality. There is far less guesswork involved. And I think it's conferences like these that make our clients very aware that it's not just the small online shop that's working with companies like iProspect and many of the other competitors in this room. These are big global brands. And we work with these brands, as do many of our competitors, every day to deliver performance goals. Their CMOs are still interested in reach, and they're still interested in more traditional brand media. But the goals that we allow them to achieve help deliver some of the most effective ROI they've ever seen. And our role in the bigger scheme of things, is becoming more and more important. It's more and more important for us to have the right people talking to the clients and to the media owners about what we expect. And these brands will continue to spend more and more because they're seeing more and more results. But making sense of the data is critical. For a few years, some of those large brands that you see, were doing a lot of these activities in isolation. 
And when we think about the transmedia story, there needs to be a central focus that is bringing together all of that insight in order for us to deliver the end game. So looking at the information that is delivered to us in these pockets and bringing it all together is absolutely critical for us to be able to drive success for those big brands because they're pretty impatient. So in order to become a performance marketing centric organization, as I mentioned at the get go, is we need to understand how convergence and the media landscape has changed and how it's impacting marketing dollars moving forward. We need to understand the interaction between technology, the various devices that we have to be applicable on, the various devices that create a whole new consumer journey, and the role of data and the new ways to connect with consumers needs to be front and center in the planning process. People need to be consulting the performance marketing data leads before they even start to look strategically at where the brand needs to compete. So our recommendation is identify your partners, listen to everybody, and make sure that you test and learn. It doesn't cost a lot of money, but the results will really surprise you. So driving digital performance is a theme that's not going to go away. And I believe that it will be front and center in some of the world's largest brands, marketing strategies in the very near future. And if we don't know how to address it, that we're going to miss out on the opportunity. So over the next couple of days, I think there'll be a lot more detail around how to be successful. So hopefully you'll be taking lots of notes. So thanks, and I'm really looking forward to some questions. Thank you very much for that, Ruth. If you could join me, please, on stage. I know that's, that's a little bit of yeah, a pothole right there. Helpful, yeah. <laughs> so you've heard it from Ruth. She would like to hear questions from the audience, please, because I think it's really a learning experience, this whole process, isn't it? Can we ask for another microphone for Ruth, please? Thank you, Kuya. There you go. So we wish to invite the audience to participate in the open forum. Please approach the nearest microphone. Oh, there you go. There's a willing victim. Hi. Uh, hello. Hello. Kindly state your name and company. Susan, Susan. Yes, it My is. My name is Ray. I'm uh, with Dillstar, but I used to be with Amazon. Um, and you talked a little bit about ROI and the last click, trying mm -hmm. to understand the last click. And in the world I came from, the last click was an online purchase. So I have two questions that are related. The first one is, what percent of iProspect's business in the Philippines involves the last action of the customer being an online purchase, as opposed to the last action being something they need to consummate offline, such as they download a coupon, go somewhere else, or they buy the Adidas shoe in the store. I consider this the last action being consummated offline. Mm. So what percent of what you're doing now has the last action consummated online versus just the last action consummated offline? And the related question to that is, do you think the advertising, percent advertising spend mm. on digital in the Philippines can truly take off without e-commerce, meaning online purchasing, actually taking off? Good question. OK. It's a, it's a very granular question. Um, I prospect is relatively young in the Philippines. So what I am going to do is uh, look at the business as a whole and I would expect our ambition is to deliver more last click to sale as the business evolves. Um, but when I look at the profile of some of our larger clients, it, it, you're right, it's not a possibility at this particular point in time to click and buy. So what we're doing with a lot of our, our, our big international clients is we evaluate our success and our last click based on some uh, action-oriented KPIs. 
So, for example, high quality engagement for, for clients like uh, Nokia are really important milestones for us to model against. So if we can't click to buy, we look at clicking to deliver a user that has the highest prop propensity to purchase offline or when an online purchase stream is available. I would say the split for click to purchase is probably versus not to purchase online but to purchase offline is probably about 30, 70 at this point in time because you're right, we need a very robust e-commerce environment in order for our clients to deliver online purchases. Now, when I look at markets like China, for example, I don't think it's sort of horse, cart, cart, horse, if you know what I mean. The Chinese market was, is a really good example of a, a very robust digital marketplace with a lot of very granular KPIs around digital media without having a very robust e-commerce um, opportunity. The e-commerce opportunity is probably three years old in China, but before that it was very, very tricky to buy anything online directly because of their payment models. You could put your hand up and say, I'll reserve that and then you guys come and collect some money and then bring me the product. I think that we do need to have um, a more robust payment method in order for e-com to take off and then I would expect our business would be reversed. 70% click to buy, 30% more brand audience oriented KPIs. Yep. Thank you very much for that question. You can also tweet your questions. I'm not sure if you already have. Do we have a tweet question? Not yet. It's a shy morning for everybody, isn't it? It is. It is. It is. What, one thing I do want to, I mean, I thought that was a great question, and I think having, you know, coming from Amazon, it's very focused on click to buy. When you look at, um, when you look at iProspect as a business, and, and, and it, it is a, it's a big, big business in North America, in the UK, in, in the rest of Asia Pacific, in markets like Australia. The business is, in markets like Australia, there is a lot of click to buy, but our business is still probably 50-50. Performance marketing is, is very much about delivering somebody that wants to purchase an item or is going to convert or is going to deliver an action. But a lot of it is about really focusing the, the, the consumer to a decision that, that has far less ambiguity <laughs> than, than traditional marketing methods or traditional media methods. So I, I think that we are, we will always have an area of our business that, that will be about finding these high quality engaged users and retargeting them with other messages about brand loyalty, about announcements, about new products. I think it's not always about the sale. Well, I guess for me as a consumer, it's about trust. It is. You know, knowing that, okay, I, I may like what it looks like when I see it on the computer, but then I don't know if it'll fit me or if it'll get delivered. In the Philippines, let's say here, show of hands, who likes buying online over going to the mall? Would you say that's a what, 30%? Yeah. Who, who is a mauler? Who is a mall rat here? Who would rather, because you want to see the product and you want to feel it, right? You want to try it. Mike, you are a mauler, embarrassing. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you have to buy online, Mike, not allowed. You know, you know, I think that's a real, it's a really good point. There are certain things, I, I, have, I have friends that buy everything online and I think, why would you go and spend that much money on a handbag on the internet, for goodness sake, when you can go in and, Feel you know, it, get smell a cup of tea, try it on with your outfit. I, I, I personally would never buy a handbag on the internet. However, 
I do buy sports shoes, I buy sport food, I buy tubes for tires, I buy, I buy a lot of stuff online. I buy books like I did last night online. I don't, I don't really need, I've experienced it before. It becomes a, you know, I, I'm already a loyal customer at that particular point. So it's... But you're probably a loyal customer to the process. Like let's say you buy from an Amazon. It's a trusted mm -hmm. venue for yes. it. Yes. Whereas I think out here we're still craving for that, for that particular avenue where, you know, from the delivery point to, you know, knowing that the product is in good condition. Yes. I yeah. think that's, that's where the discrepancy is in the Philippines. So there's a lot of work to be done still. And I think we have, who do we have here that's a speaker this afternoon or tomorrow from, from, that, from, that, from that market, you know? So, but we have, Ruth Stubbs is only going to be here. Are you going to be here tomorrow as well? No, But your questions are only going to be valid this morning. So there is a Twitter question. Okay, let's see if I can read it. Here, from Tony, is this the one? Yes. Ruth, you said you ask clients to pay for results, but of course people must be paid for time. So how would you balance the two? We call it a performance incentive. And we do, um, all of our clients understand that, that you know, we are a business as much as they are a business. So we, we do increasingly apply performance incentive to our business. And, um, and I think that that's not unusual. Many of our competitors and our partners also apply an incentive. If you're in the performance space, it makes a lot of sense. In markets in North Asia, um, a good amount of our business is based on performance incentives because that is the, 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 the way the business has worked for a long time. When, when our clients previously went direct to affiliate networks, went direct to ad networks that provided full service, uh, they didn't have to pay for time. They paid for performance. And, you know, I'm sure our CFO is not hugely in favor of that <laughs> around the region, but uh, it is an increasing way of showing that we believe that our product is intelligent enough and robust enough to be able to support our business based on an incentive payment. It's, there's, not a, there's not a magic formula. It really is from a, a, a scenario. All right, so we have another question from JC. With data comes benchmark. How do we establish credible benchmarks for local markets? We use our partners most of the time. Um, if it's a new category to the group, we use uh, an amalgamation of international statistics, we use Google a lot. We use Comscore, who are going to be here this afternoon, I think, Joe. Um, we use our experience um, in particular categories, and then we create a lot, of, uh, a lot of models that give us a very refined range of achieving a specific deliverable. So until we have critical mass, I mean, when you start talking about trading desks and uh, real-time bidding programs, there is always a period where you run enough media in order to model a response margin. So that's pretty much how we do it. With RTB, we'll do it real-time and with usually with general digital and search, we will do it through an amalgamation of data. Readily available right now. I don't think people are asking Google enough. I don't think people are asking Facebook enough. I know every time I ring up, I get everything I want. So clearly, not many other people are asking them. <laughs> What's the other one? Okay. Uh, is there, there is no other question. I think this lady is, are you going to stand up for a question or, oh no, <laughs> okay. But you were talking 25 years that you've been in, mm -hmm. the, in the business. I mean, how, of course it's evolved a lot, but don't you wish sometimes that you go back to a simpler time? I mean, there's a yes and a no answer for sure. Do I wish I was 25 years younger? Well, apart from that. 
<laughs> apart from that, can you imagine yourself at 25, let's say? Or I'm not saying you were 25 what? then. Oh my goodness me. But imagine yourself that young and going into this sort of industry now. Isn't there so much more to learn though? For someone just starting out? Well, I mean, it's an interesting question. In 1997, when I came to Manila for the first time, I mean, there would be two people in this room my client and my boss <laughs> and that that would be it that would be it so i i think that the, you know we we do know a lot now a lot more now but the, the principles are pretty much the same and um and you know we we're still working with with some of our old friends i mean yahoo's still around <laughs> thank goodness but uh but yeah i think the principles still apply i mean we 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 trade and we we buy more if the, the 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 inventory is working we have target audiences that we need to buy against um, I, I think I think what we learned back then has paved the way for for where we are today most definitely but I don't think that that there are enough people from my profession in engaging seriously in this area. Television's incredibly important, but before we know it, it's going to be a biddable commodity, just like display inventory. And we have to get our heads around it. And, and I must admit, I haven't ad served a campaign for uh, seven years a long time but then I would expect that 90% of the people we work with in, in our offices have never done that so they don't understand the, 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 the basic principles of what is about to be the, the future of our business which is tricky I think here though television is still very big it's very big everywhere but I how many people watch news let's say online as opposed to watching it on TV show of heads Right. I mean, well, it's it's growing sort of. That's like fifty percent, let's say. Sure, and, and and you know, in markets like Japan, for example, it's it's still huge. But but I, I talked about the, the the way that the story connects between devices, and and I think that that is more important than ever. And if we can talk about the 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 genesis of the story on television, and then keep it traveling through all of the different devices effectively, then that's, a, that's, that's massively important and it will resonate incredibly well with consumers. It doesn't cost a million times more to do that. It just takes a team that understands the data, that understands the consumer, and, and it's, it's doable. Television is an important part of what we do, but it's still, you know, sometimes just like search, the first time you hear about something. You know, you hear about it on TV, you understand that you can search it on the internet and blah blah. You know, I mean, television's always going to be important. So it's pretty much just a cousin of the internet that you have to know. Sure, <laughs> sure. Okay, so if we don't have any more questions for Ruth, oh, there you go. Thank you, please take the stand. You know, it, we like doing that on the 11th hour when we know that you're going to say goodbye. That's when all the questions come in, right? Good morning. <laughs> yes, sir. My name sir. is uh, Bingo Soriano from Snapworks. Uh, my question, you talked about performance marketing. Have you uh, tried benchmarking uh, what is uh, higher performance in terms of getting an action, uh, traditional media versus uh, online? We have. We've done a lot of work with search, and I think a lot of our... our, our friends at, uh, at other agencies have done the same thing. We see a lot of correlation, a very high correlation between television and search. Um, so it allows us to model far more effectively now with our flighting. It allows us to, to also model the, the, you remember the, the chart that I showed that looks at display, affiliate, SEO, SEO. The attribution model has become a lot more fluid now as well based on the insights that we found between the correlation of television and search. I think that's where most of the work's being done and I, w I, w I think it's the most logical 
place to start. But yeah, television and search work very, very well together. And, um, and it's helped us really model the consumer journey as well to be able to know what to put into the search terms when we're buying branded, non-branded, because that impacts budget a lot. So uh, search becomes more effective when there's television involved nine times out of 10. Yeah, can I just make a follow-up question? Uh, I guess my question is more of, have you uh, determined which is more powerful in terms of uh, delivering the action? Yes. The file? Is, it, is it traditional or is it online? Well, what is the action and what is the objective? If it's to announce a new product, for example, and I have to think of a client, if I think about General Motors, for example, a big, big client we've been working quite closely with um, globally, when they, 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 they're not going to announce a, a new Chevy uh, on Google um, without support from television. So if it comes, if you're talking about my objective is to get people to understand that Chevy now has a new color or Chevy new, now has a new dashboard, then it's a combination of media. Because when we're looking at ROI, we can't just throw everything at television. And companies like General Motors are very, very focused on the bottom line. So what they want to do is use television to the point that they can announce and inform and then use, as you put it, well, less traditional media to drive the action. That is getting people into the dealership. That is getting people to actually trade in and buy up. So it depends on the client, depends on the project. And I think that's a very important point to, to finish this session with, is we need to make sure now more than ever that we're asking the right questions. What works better? Better for what? And, and, and I think that is the most, what do you want to achieve? And we don't ask enough questions in Asia of our clients. <laughs> we, 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 we tend to just do what we're told. Now we need to ask. <laughs> Thank you very much for that question. I think we have one more question from the crowd before we let Miss Ruth sit down. Yes, please. He's getting the question from his phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I had to type it down because <laughs> there was a lot of, you know, information going through. Okay, go okay. ahead. Um, I'm Alan from iProspect Philippines. Um, ma'am. Hi, Alan. <laughs> oh, yes, ma'am. You should. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. Um, in many sessions that we've attended in the past and even till today, the emphasis on convergence has always been um, clearly stated one way or another. Mm -hmm. And it has always been playing in my thoughts, at what point will dig digital media take the lead in advertising? Or in your 25 years of experience, do you think that that is going to ever happen? And if it will, how soon do you think it would take? I think that's a great question. As an organization, we've been talking about this very seriously um, over the last few months. And, uh, and, and I, I really believe that the more our clients' businesses rely on hard metrics, immediate results, the more companies like iProspect are going to be expected to lead the conversation. And I, I, I truly believe that a lot of these big brands that we work with in more traditional ways are becoming more focused whether it's because budgets are being squeezed or it's the economic environment that is forcing them into that position. But they are more reliant on the areas of our business that can give them immediate results. And, um, and whether that's iProspect, whether that's iSavar, whether that's Neo, Performix, those guys will need to be prepared to take the big seat at the table a lot sooner than we would expect. So yeah, it's going to happen. It already is happening. 
Good question. Okay, so maybe just your parting shot to everybody for, for the conference and what they should really take away from it. I, I, I would like to leave you with something that I just mentioned, which is we need to be asking the right questions. And I don't think those questions are that complex. It's something that may sound a bit cheeky sometimes, but we need to, to make sure that we ask the question, which is, what do you, what do you want? And, and I understand why it's a little bit scary to ask those questions to some of our big clients, but it, it helps them to understand, well, set expectations. What are you trying to achieve with the money that you're spending? Because if we understand that, then we'll bring in the right guys to deliver it. And there's tons of them. All right, so with that, we'd like to give Ms. Ruth Stubbs a very, very warm round of applause. Thank you very much for being with us. <laughs>